Hey bears, I am the Gaming Grizzly and welcome back to Harry Potter Magic Awaken. And today I'm going over the top 20 tips and tricks that I wish I knew when I started the game. But before we do that, make sure to leave me a fat like, a comment in the comment section below if you want to share a tip with us. And of course, if you are new, subscribe to the Gaming Grizzly. Alright, let's jump right into it. Starting with tip number one, open your house chest regularly. You can have a total of four house chests. And once you opened one, a new one will recharge every three hours. These house chests are very important, especially for free-to-play players who are playing the game a lot. Because they give you gems, gold, cards, and if you are lucky enough, you can even get a legendary card out of the house chest. To open a chest, you need a total of 20 activity points, which can be earned in the dueling club, the different classes, the ball, practice matches, and the forbidden forest. Tip number two, the yearbook. The more house chests you open, the more you can advance in the yearbook, which is not only giving you more insights into the story of the game, but also rewards you greatly for completing each chapter. Library passes, curious card packs and epic cards are common rewards and every now and then you will even receive a legendary card. Tip number 3. Do your homework. Sounds kinda funny, but your homework basically resembles the season pass. Complete at least 3 daily tasks every day to receive a free library pass for free. Completing daily and weekly missions will also push your progress on the season pass, which will give you a lot of different rewards. If you purchase the luxurious box, your rewards will even be greater. Tip number 4. Take advantage of the daily hot deals. First of all, you will be able to receive a daily free chest with several rewards in it. And second of all, if you want to spend your gems on library passes or curious card packs, then make sure to get the great value packages from the daily deals. Tip number 5. Save your gems. And if you really want to spend them, make sure to use them for the daily deals from the hot deals section. Do not use your gems on cosmetic, except of when you just love to look fashionable. It's not too expensive to buy some cosmetics, so just go ahead. In general, for the gameplay, cosmetics don't really matter. Leveling up your cards does though. Tip number 6. If you're a new player, play the admission tasks. There are a total of 19 quite simple tasks that will reward you with great rewards. The last being a key for the Kringot walls. After going to the Kringot's bank and opening up the vault, you will get several cards and one of them is legendary. Tip number 7 is probably one of the most important tips. Level up your spellbook. As we already know, leveling up our cards is very important. But that does not mean to only level up the cards we use. Make sure to level up all of your cards as soon as you can. There is even an option that lets you upgrade all at once. By upgrading your cards, you will increase your spellbook level, which will also increase your overall health, attack and exploration stats. Tip number 8. Play the Forbidden Forest. The Forbidden Forest is the best way to get new echoes, which are the second most important item when it comes to building your deck. Besides your cards, of course. Tip number 9. Upgrade your echoes. In the beginning it is okay to upgrade any echo, just so you will get a stat boost. But later on you will have plenty of legendaries and even duplicate legendaries that you want to level up. Go to your deck and click on the echoes. From here you can see all the echoes that you own. By leveling up the echoes, up to 8 of your cards will get an upgrade and you will also receive attack and health boni. It's also important to know the abilities of your echoes since different abilities will complement your deck in different ways. Neville Longbottom, for example, will let you heal ally units if there is no enemy nearby, which is a great buff. While Severus Snape lets every second attack ricochet once. On top of that, it increases your basic attack. So know your echoes. Tip number 10, make friends. You can make friends by clicking on the people, for example in chat, and add them to your friend list. Friends can be very helpful, since there are many ways of playing together in Harry Potter Magic Awakened. If you are playing in the Forbidden Forest for example, it will be crucial to have friends helping you out, since the higher levels in which you will get the legendary echoes are nearly impossible to master alone. Tip number 11. Collect the clues from the Forbidden Forest missions. These will grant you great rewards, from legendary echoes to curious card boxes to decoration items for your dorm. Tip number 12. Sometimes by walking around Hogwarts you will find a golden light on the floor. Pick it up. It usually rewards you with echo crystals which are used to upgrade your echoes. Tip number 13. If you are playing rank and you want to rank high, concentrate on either solo or duo PvP. Don't rank in both areas at the same time, because only the highest rank in one counts. 
If you look at the rewards, you can see that I claimed the reward for 2250 rank points, but my solo rank is only at 1350. This makes more sense if we look at the duo rank, in which I already reached well over 2250 points. Tip number 14, join a club. From here you can join the club events and you can also get a lot of rewards from the club store. Participate in club events to get points and collect your monthly legendary card or weekly epic cards. You can also get gold and other items from the club store. Tip number 15, when you are in your dorm, make sure to check out your achievements. Achievements can give you high rewards and sometimes they are super easy, but we just didn't know that these missions even existed. Tip number 16, know your potions. Even if you don't need them, it is good to know which potions you could brew. Therefore, make sure to at least read the description of each potion effect. If you want to progress in your yearbook faster and open more house chests, you could brew a dreamless sleep potion because it refreshes a house chest cooldown time. If you want to increase your drop rate of echoes in the forbidden forest, use a memory potion. Or if you want to rank up in PvP faster, brew a Draught of Peace potion because it will not deduct points from your tier rank in case you lose a battle after drinking this potion. And there are so much more. You don't have to use them, but it's good to know what you could use if you need it. Tip number 17, log in daily for the daily reward, which will randomly grant you gold, gems, library passes or mystery cards. And also check your mail regularly for bonuses. The dev team is sending out different reward letters with great content like gems, gold, library passes and much much more. Tip number 18, build smart decks. I don't want to go too much into detail when it comes to deck building, but make sure to understand all cards and how they can work together. If we look at the legendary card, the Norwegian Ridgeback Egg for example, we see that it needs to be healed before it hatches and deals great damage to the enemies. Even in its tip section, it already explains that it is smart to hide the egg in fog with nebulous, so the enemy can't see it and won't damage it while it's healing. On top of that, you could use the Essence of Dittany to make it hatch even faster, and Neville Longbottom as Echo will allow you to heal your Ridgeback Egg. Know your cards, know good combinations, and you will have a good basic understanding of the competitive side of the game. Tip number 19. What we learned from tip number 18 is that legendaries are really good but you usually build a deck around these legendary cards. Don't build a deck filled with all legendary cards, because supporting one legendary with common, rare and epic cards will be much more powerful. Tip number 20, keep an eye open for limited time events and play in these limited time events. They usually provide great and limited rewards. And there are also different events, for example the bigger seasonal events like Christmas and Halloween events, as well as smaller events like the Puzzle Event Hunt. And those were my top 20 tips and tricks for Harry Potter Magic Awakened. If these tips were helping you out, make sure to leave me a fat like. Also leave a comment in the comment section below if you want to share tips with all of us. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe to The Gaming Chrisley. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!